All right. Welcome, everybody, to our latest episode of Beer and Broadband, the podcast where we talk about broadband technology and any topic related to that. We are excited to have some amazing uh, guests today. Our topic today is going to be diversity, and we've got some people on the on this panel that really understand that. And we'll dig into a little bit of the issues around why that matters in broadband and technology and in hiring and just overall the general industry and what it what we can do to make it better and the impact of that on our greater purpose of bringing broadband to more people. So before we get too far into this, let's do introductions. And um, obviously, I'm Nick Dinsmore, the host of the podcast, but I want to throw it over to Fields Jackson. If you want to introduce yourself, Fields, that would be great. Hey, good morning. I'm Fields Jackson. I'm the uh, CEO of a company called Racing Toy Diversity Magazine. I'm also the president of the College Diversity Network. I'm an adjunct professor at about 15 HBCUs around the country. I'm trying to get up to 25. And and one of the proudest moments I had, I'm I'm recently the uh, chief diversity officer for Bonfire. Uh, And uh, as I travel, um, it's amazing. how many people come to us and say, well, Fields, this is, you know, thanks, you know, you know, well, what's this bonfire thing? So it's, it's incredible um, uh, when I talk about, you know, my role and what I'm doing to advance, you know, diversity in, in an industry. So I'm thrilled to be part of uh, the team. Awesome. And Megan, who are you? Who am I? I think this is Nick, maybe the fifth time I've been on this podcast. You're, you're uh, a regular now. Plus. You're You're a regular. <laughs> Regular favorite. Uh, well, for those who have not watched any of the others, um, I am Megan Beresford. I am the director of broadband programs at Learn Design Apply. We are a grant consulting and management firm that has a dedicated broadband team of now six people, um, hopefully soon seven, as I'm sure everyone here knows it's a busy world um, and you know, really love what what we do here, helping people secure funds, and I'm very excited for today's conversation. Awesome. Welcome. And last, but certainly not least, Mr. Hollister. Hey, uh, good morning. That's why today we're, we're having uh, not necessarily our typical pint, but uh, coffee, and uh, but enjoying uh, having the team together today. So I am Brian Hollister. I am the CEO of Bonfire Infrastructure Group. Bonfire exists, as Nick said, to help connect people with affordable broadband because we know it makes our lives better. Um, you know, our company has been focused on this industry for six years as the Bonfire um, company, and we, we help um, folks from the very beginning of figuring out what's possible in, in trying to build a, a, a broadband network in an underserved community to then doing, you know, all the detailed engineering, the construction, and even ultimately operations, if that's needed, um, to help, you know, create a sustainable broadband solution. We work with uh, Megan a ton in helping to secure funds um, for tribal nations, municipalities, and then uh, Fields obviously has recently been on the team. I guess, Fields, how long has have we been working together now? It's well, been... it's going on um, uh, seven months. Yeah, uh, exactly. Oh. Time, flies. Time flies. Seven yeah. months. <laughs> right? It's, it's so, like it's fast, like broadband, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. But up, up. It's early, but I'm still here. Okay. All right. Keep, keep <laughs> us on. Keep keep us on track here, Mr. Nick. All right. Let's uh, let's dive right into it. So I guess uh, obviously we talked about the topic for today is diversity, but maybe I'll put this to fields. I mean, how should an organization really define diversity and inclusion? Diversity is talent. It's just this flat out talent, and um, you know folks that you know don't see it that way you, you know you're passing on talent um i was just at a a, a, a school up in uh, virginia and uh i was talking to the school and there was a young folks and i said you know everybody in the room is diverse and they all looked at me and said because you're young um think about it you know a lot of these industries um they're you know they're aging population you know they've got older folks they're you know, they're not attuned to what's going on in the industry. So no matter what color you are, you represent their replacements. You, you are, so from a diversity, from a thought, how, how you approach things. So diversity is, you know, is finding the people that are in sectors that represent and, and have, a, 
have a vested interest in that sector, getting the best and brightest to sort of get on your team. And it's um, the best leaders can get good players on their team. It's not, you know, it's like, you know, it's like a Nick Saban or a Dabo Sweeney. You know, it's, it's you know, why, why are people, why are the best attracted to those types of folks? And when you're that type of leader, uh, you attract um, talent. If you got great messages, you're attracting those messages. So now the diversity comes in because everybody that sort of hears that message is probably not going to look like you all the time. So if you've got some type of hang up that's, you know, somebody's attracted to your message, they, they're a believer, and then you're shutting the door, well, you may be shutting the door to a potential customer, to a potential, you know, leader. So, so the folks that can sort of, you know, become sort of um, not blind, but sort of, you know, have that, you know, that, 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 mask okay what does this person represent can they support our team can they help us win uh i find those folks tend to perform better than the ones that are saying well i don't like this guy because you know so whatever so but again diversity is you know it's a business case and then the folks that you know are the best community organizers the best mayors you know you can you know who, who are the who are the best and there's a common theme that we see pretty quickly great Megan, do you know have any other fields, perspective on that? Well, I was going to say, Fields, something you said um, really struck with me. Um, I was the other day rereading one of the guidances for a program, um, and they're talking about diverse communities and underrepresented communities, and they talked about older people. Um, and I think you're mm-hmm. totally right that that's something we don't always consider as, you know, perhaps an, an underrepresented or underserved group. And they really were great. I was, I was impressed kind of the level they went to and listing out, you know, veterans, formerly incarcerated individuals, people of color, women, people in, um, you know, different communities, um, in the LGBTQ community. I mean, it's really, you know, I think when we think of diversity, sometimes we think of just kind of, you know, one category or another, but it really is, as the word says, <laughs> it really is <laughs> a diverse group of diversity. Um, and I think that's important to remember when we when we think about diversity and inclusion, um, and, and I you think know, how, we, how we go about that. And I think, and Brian and I could probably attest that you know, unfortunately, you know, being honest with ourselves in the industry, right? Technology over the you know, let's say twenty the last twenty years has not been as diverse as it should be, right? In, in that definition, Megan, right? It's yeah. Uh, and even I would say, in the, even you know, narrowing it down, even in the broadband space, you know, from design operations to all these things, like the diversity has not really been there. I think it's gotten better for sure over time, but um, I think you know, obviously, there's a long way to go to create a much more diverse environment. And, and it, the inclusivity, which is obviously we're trying to include more people in the broadband connection side, right? Well, it's easy in our industry to kind of see, you know, where the challenge is by just going to one of our industry events, right? One of our shows. So, yeah. you know, I brought Fields to a particular <laughs> show. That's a very popular one. And, you know, to show them around and, you know, tell them what some of these acronyms mean that we love to throw out in the broadband industry to confuse people. And, um, you know, of course, diversity is on our mind. And, um, I mean, it's just, it was very clear that, um, there wasn't diversity nearly as much as it needs to be in age, right? Uh, gender, um, people of color. I mean, it's 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 an older white male dominated crowd, particularly. But what's happening, I think, and at least for Bonfire, you know, a Colorado-based um, company, we we we've had our challenges too. And and our first challenge was as we got into the industry and started this company or really started this company, excuse me, coming from being in the industry for a long time, we went and hired a bunch of people that we knew that were really good at their jobs. And they all had 20 plus years experience, some 35 even, right? And and that was really great immediately to hit the ground mm-hmm. running and having a, just a super uh, experienced team. But it was very quickly, you know, looking around, especially as I was the youngest person in that crowd, and I'm not that young, I know, I look at it, I'm not, <laughs> um, is that we are going to have a short lifespan as a company if we don't start getting some young people in here and taking this talent, right, that's in so much of, of these people's, you know, 
minds and transferring that amazing, ex you know, talent and experience that they have. So, so we've gotten a lot better at that. And that was, that was like day one. And we're, we're, we're it's amazing. We're, we're, we're very balanced. I feel now from uh, an age perspective in, in all aspects. And then it was like, okay, well, you know, there's, this is kind of a guy's club and we know in a lot of the particular fields, we've had great experience with, with uh, women engineers. So we started focusing on hiring more women. And, and, but the first thing was you, you hire white women because they're the ones that are around in your network predominantly. And we, got, and we started making some, some headway there. But, but one of the things that was missing and what Fields has connected the dots on and, and why we started immediately working with Fields is connecting the, the talent that is available to industries that typically, typically haven't had the conduit mm -hmm. to get that talent. And for us, building these networks in areas that, that are, are underserved typically, there's a lot of diversity. So how are we going to properly represent that community if we don't have those lenses to look through? So, so Fields has really helped us, and, and we have still a long way to go, um, but we've made some great headway of just being able to connect the conduit to the talent that's out there that's, that's very talented, especially young people coming out of school with these HBCUs. There's just an amazing opportunity. So Fields, I mean, you, you should talk some more about that because uh, I just love hearing as you're in front of these you know, students, um, they love to figure out how to get into broadband and it doesn't seem like we've maybe done the best job as an industry connecting to them. I guess, just, I guess I'm curious though on that though, how, I mean, how should we measure whether we are doing a good job on diversity? Like, I, I, mean, I there... might add something there and then I feel absolutely, yep. I know Brian directed a question your way and I don't want to interrupt yep. that. Um, but I think maybe this relates to both um, or everything that's going on in that, um, you know, I commend absolutely Fields and Brian for, you know, recognizing this and taking action on it. Um, recalling one of my early jobs, you know, you can, you can do a lot of recruiting and get very talented people, but if you have a company culture that is not accepting, if you have a company culture where sexist comments are made, where there's homophobia, where, um, you know, there's casual racism, you're not going to keep that wonderful talent. Um, and so I think that's kind of something I don't, I don't want us to skip over that because it, it takes a lot of hard discussions. Um, and I think that, you know, there is going to be resistance when you have those hard discussions and, um, but they absolutely need to happen. So, um, you know, I wish in some of my early jobs, I, I had my wisdom that I had now that I could prompt that and, and make it known. But um, I think that that is another component of it, right? It's, it's not just finding the talent, it's keeping the talent. Oh, you, you, you just hit, that, you, I mean, that's, that's, that's huge, right? And, yeah, and I think what is. we try to do at first, like a lot of things I jump into, we try to boil the ocean. And, and then it was like, well, well let, hold on, let's, let's take a step back and let's just start having the right discussions with the leadership team and, and throughout the, the team. And let's just start trying. Let's make it just an effort at trying to be more open-minded um, in general and be more respectful of who's around us. You know, in, in our group, we, we have everything from folks that have been working and, and never been behind a computer and in the field doing manual labor to PhDs and data scientists, you know, working to help figure out, you know, um, growth trends and things like that to help the economics work in these particular areas that we, you know, do broadband feasibility work uh, around. So it's, we have the ultimate diversity in that regard. And you have to be very conscious of who's around you, right? And boys, when they're all just boys, we tend to probably not have the most uh, politically correct conversations. Um, and we need to be more focused that you have no idea when someone's just sitting there right on your shoulder. And that comment that you say is like a dagger in the heart, right? And, and so you just have to be so uber conscious, but at the same time, not walk on eggshells, 
So like what I'm trying to do in my organization is not flip the, the world upside down, but just put a concerted effort led by leadership, right? Lead by example and, and work at making a difference <clears throat> and trying to just increase where we're at each and every single year, right? Make progress. Each year we can make progress and each year we can become better. We can always do better. Nick, you had, you had asked, how do you measure this? Yeah. Like this. I mean, this, what are you doing? Leadership, you know, what are you doing about it? Talking about, so do you measure, you know, again, a lot of organizations take a lot of pictures. It's just, it's fluff. It's pictures. It's, but again, now when you have yet, uh, things like this, so what is leadership? What is Brian? What is Chris Turk? What, is, what are they thinking? You know, and again, those, those public statements are now be, being measured going forward. The other thing to, to answer Brian's question, um, there's events that happen. The pandemic, it happened. And um, I know everybody in the world thought everybody had access to broadband. I did. I said, well, you know, everybody's got, you know, everybody's. So then, you know, schools and then underserved populations, you know, when they were, you know, you couldn't go to school and you got to go online, right? And I'm driving by and you see, you know, 20 kids sitting out in front of McDonald's and it's like in the rain, you know, you know the curiosity with me is like, what are they doing there? They're applying for, no, they're, they're taking their classes. I said, well, they're taking their classes. That's the best broadband, you know? So you saw, you saw the discrepancy where, you know, there was a population that, okay, it was, if somebody said, well, just go online. Like it was like just flipping a switch. No, you know? So then you saw where there was gaps Right. And now, you know, what, what uh, drew me to to a bonfire. And again, it was Megan and her team at Learn Design because we had done some other stuff with them. Is to hear what, you know, Brian and Chris Turk, what they were talking about. And then what's different in my world is when leadership says, well, you know, we think we got it all figured out, but let's go talk. You know, we're going to go on a, a sovereign nation. Let's go talk to them and ask them what they need. And I was like, what? <laughs> you, know, you, know, you mean somebody would actually, you know, take the time as opposed to, you know, most most industries, it's it's how we do it. And again, Brian alluded to, you know, we've been doing this for 30 years. This is how we do it. So you go shove that down. And I don't mean shove, but you go, you go, you know, this is the way we do it, my way or the highway. But to have the have the empathy, have the 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 courage, right? To go in and say, "Hey, you know what? What do you, what are you what are you looking for?" Um, it's actually surprising, probably to the, and Brian. I, I want to sit down and talk to him. I think you guys should write a book. It's probably really surprising to the people you were talking to. They were like, "Man, who is this dude?" Right? And then once you realize, okay, they mean it. it. It doesn't happen overnight, you know. This is, but once they say, "Man, these guys are for real," and then the, especially on a sovereign nation where they they've heard it all, but guy, I'm just telling you. They've heard it all for centuries. So for you to say, okay, we're doing this, and then have them say, hey, we believe these folks. You know, we, you know, they're asking us to help us, and it's genuine. So that's when that's when the ideas come up. That's when, again, their approach probably would be they'll probably bring something up in a meeting that you know has never thought of, right? But just like you know, after you, you know, after you, the initial shock, you go, wow, that was a good idea, <laughs> you know was a good idea don't know if it's possible but that's that's when you start to get that that friction that i call diversity where people are coming to the table you know not getting married they're not going on a date but they're saying hey you know we want to solve these things and you see the greater good come out of that so that's what drew me to uh the bonfire that's what i How do you think that's what i do a lot yeah. and to have that and, and a lot of times it comes from the bottom up but to hear leadership do that that's what's different. So I actually tell other folks that I'm working with that are, that, and there's some huge companies that can't get this figured out. I say, you know what, here's a, here's a company I'm working with, Bonfire. This, you know, again, it, 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 look at what their leadership is doing. Look at what, how they're modeling this. Look at how they're doing this. And I, I use Bonfire as an example. Okay, if you want to put a stake in the ground, this is how you do it. So I guess to that point, and, and Megan's comment earlier about, you know, past experiences with companies 
I mean, what should companies be thinking about? I mean, you said, you just said there's companies you're working with that are large that are still struggling with it. Like, what are they doing wrong? And then what are they doing right? Well, they're doing, doing lot, they're doing a lot wrong, but you know, to Megan's point, you know, what they're figuring out is that people are leaving. That's so they still haven't figured it out. But you know, when the, the talent like a Megan is walking out the door, you know, and they, they call it quiet, whatever they call it, you know, people are just checked out. So what you're losing is the talent. And then hopefully you catch that before, you know, everybody that, you know, because there's people that, you know, they're skating along and they haven't been working since they've been there. So you don't want to have all that dead wood. you know. So the people that are actually producing, when they say, hey, I had enough of this for whatever reason, and they're walking out, that's usually the, is the what they call the canary in the coal mine. <laughs> you know, you yeah. walk into the canary's dead. You know, hey, something's going on. Now, you can ignore that. Or you can say, hey, you have those meetings. And it's leadership. It's it's a tough conversation. And then to hear it, it's probably something the leaders are doing, to Brian's point, that you're doing things that are insulting people. Not that you're intentionally doing that, but you're having these all-boy things. And, you know, and you, you say, well, how come the women know? Well, you're excluding them. So now to ask me the question, and you're going to hear it, you know, if you're honest, you're going to hear a tough response, right? You're going to hear a tough response. And now not recoil from that, go, ah, you're fired. Well, okay, and then, the, you know, the one person that went up to put the bell on the cat gets killed. They, they, there's nobody else going up, right? So now to have that tough conversation, to hear that, take that medicine, and now go, hey, and be reflective, that's when people go, okay, I think there's something going on. So, you know, Nick, to your, there's a lot of companies that are struggling with it, but it, they're struggling because they're, now they're losing great talent because, you know, great talent saying, hey, I don't, I don't have to work here anymore. I'm not going to put up with this anymore. And, and that's what I'm seeing is that, uh, you know, the recognition that you're losing folks that could be helping. Yeah, I would say and this, you know, is a, a hard and perhaps a, a radical statement, but people need to stop and think of what am I doing wrong? right? Because if that's happening, you are doing something wrong, whether directly or indirectly. And it's taking accountability. And it is that humbling bad medicine, as Field said, like you don't like to recognize that you are a part of the problem. You know, you might not have made the comment, but how is, you know, how, how is what you're doing or not doing affecting this? Um, and so it requires change on everyone, right? So not just the person who made the sexist comment, it's, you know, someone who, who created that culture where it was okay to make comments, you know, and so everybody has to take accountability and change, which is hard and people don't like doing it. You know, when we talk about the boys club, it is, it is so true. And I was in a job in politics, which I can tell you is another white boys club. I mean, it was, and it's hard and these things are ingrained and, you know, I, I, you know, again, not to be radical about it, but I always challenge my male friends and male colleagues to say something. And that is hard in a boys club. I understand that. It's hard, as as uh, Fields has said, to be the one standing up to put the bell on the cat. Like, you know, because you are going to, you, you may face resistance. You may face people not liking that. And that's an uncomfortable spot to be in. Um, but Nick, I would say, you know, first step in that is reflecting on yourself and you know, when yeah. you think as Fields is saying, these big companies, right? You know, I I can only assume I'm not the CEO of Microsoft or <laughs> a big tech company like that, but I imagine there's some amount of ego to getting that high that, you know, you have a billion dollar corporation and, you know, I don't I don't know if reflecting on what you're doing wrong is necessarily a, a easy thing to do when you're that high up. And um I caveat yeah. and, and just, you know, to, to be aware, I, as I don't mean to point fingers at anyone's, I know Fields doesn't mean to point fingers at anyone, but I do have to reflect on myself. What am I doing? You know, why, why does my company not have more people of color? Um, so it is acknowledging that we all have a part to play, whether active or inactive, and not just recognizing or seeing the other people in it, right? This other person did something. So I guess that's a good to, to that point. I mean, how do people, because you're right, it can be an uncomfortable conversation. I think it's, it's, it's probably easier. You know, I think if somebody is a, at a high level and as a leader and they have, they have the autonomy and the authority to make comp, to make change, obviously that's easier than, 
you know, it's position power, right? And if somebody that's, you know, a low level person speaking up is much harder than a CEO speaking up, right? For different reasons. So I guess the question is, how do you, how do you encourage that in an organization? What do you do? You have to start at the top. I mean, when, when, when the top starts it, right, the rest follows. Um, and, and there can be obviously resistance. It's not just one, you know, conversation. This just, just becomes part of the culture. Right. And, and I mean, for us, we believe every, every American deserves affordable broadband. Well, that, that then look at America and look at our makeup, right. Our, the broadband industry needs to be more reflective of the makeup that we're trying to connect to. How do we understand how to go into a, a, a particular area of ethnicity if you know in market and 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 create a trusting bond with them that they want to purchase our service um for that particular isp if we don't understand anything about their culture um so i I just you know it's like in a lot of ways sometimes you know when you look look back and you reflect it you know hindsight's 2020 and it just seems like uh, the obvious thing to do is have more lenses to look through um but I think to Megan's point, you know, you, you, you have to reflect on yourself, especially as a leader. And I think the, the, the right leaders do that a lot, right? They're, they're, they're in fact, they're the, they're the most hard on themselves, right? Um, the competition is themselves in, in a lot of ways. So if they want to do something about it, what are they doing about it? Yeah. And I would say we talk a lot about trusted messengers, right? And so, Brian, I absolutely commend going into a, a tribal nation. And it takes a lot of, you know, approaching that with humility, right? That you yes. know, we are coming in and we're coming in to listen. Um, because when we're approaching communities that are different from us, that look different from us, we're not a trusted messenger. You have to establish that trust. And it does take work and take effort, um, especially, you know, with um, people of color, communities of color and absolutely with tribal nations there has been so much distrust and historical you know oppression and backtracking and you know breaking contracts and as all of it right we know we know this history so um it does come with that you know humility and you have to listen and i would say that for internal too right listen to what employees are saying you know i recall in a past company we had a harassment training which was great. I was glad we did it, but it had nothing to do with how that company functioned, right? We didn't have the UPS man coming that people hit on. That was not (laughs) reflective of how our company worked. And, and I had tried to bring this up and, you know, I met resistance from the leadership and, and, you know, they weren't ready to listen to how it actually was. So I think it, it, you know, whether you're going into a new community or whether you're having discussions internally, it's a lot of listening and being open to hearing, hearing hard things, right? You know, I'm sure they didn't want to hear that that, com- you know, the company I was at functions that way. Um, and it is, you know, instinct reaction to be defensive. Um, but, but, you know, do, it, do you it, think that, do you think though that there are to that point about the training? I mean, obviously in, in tech and in broadband, big companies, there are a lot of automated, you know, go through this online course. And a lot of people, it's check, check, check. I mean, you're just basically clicking the buttons as you go through, right? It's not really, I would argue, it's probably not doing a lot to help. And then everyone jokes about it at the end of the day. Yeah, everybody jokes because, but, you know, and I guess maybe that's saying, you know, have we have we swung the pendulum too far in trying to, the way we're trying to do it versus, to your and Fields' point, and Brian's like, are we, you know, do we take a different approach of trying to drive diversity and inclusivity where it doesn't, it's not about a test you take online, it's more about behavior and what well, you can of, do to help of, of adjust Of course, that. Nick, we, we always swing the pendulum too, too far. I mean, we're, we're Americans, <laughs> we go big or go home. <laughs> And that's our problem. And and what I see with so many Fortune 500 companies, you know, is get that chief diversity officer, you know, in place to only see that person typically leave. I mean, feel you probably have some stats around it, right? They seem to be in place maybe a year and then it's someone else. And it's like, so you guys need to go get 
the person you know of color, the minority, to actually go talk about this is I don't know. It's kind of comical, and 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 obviously we we enlisted Fields help, um, really because it was more about Fields is being able to touch and work with a lot of different companies to see what's working and what's not working, and has been doing this now for a while. And it was more of taking a, a, a softer approach. And it was like, Field, you come on and you you help me. You know what I mean? Because like, if we're going to get this done, it's got to be me. It has to start with me. You support me, but you don't need to be the person out there telling everyone in our organization how to be be more diverse. Right. I wish this was Zoom and we had the little clappy hands up in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Put them up there right now, right? I would agree exactly what you said. I would say this for people of color, for people of women, it should not be on that, that group to educate the people doing wrong. Mm -hmm. That should be coming from the people in a position of power because mm -hmm. those are the people that are listened to, right? Mm -hmm. So absolutely. And, and it does sometimes take a wonderful person like Fields to bring this to the attention but the onus is not on that person, that minority, that group, to then educate, you know, it's, 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 the way. It's 50-50. It's and, and Nick, to, to your question, a lot of it, you know, people just don't know about this industry. It's not that they don't want to. They just aren't aware. So, again, it's been, yeah. it's been this type of industry for years, right? So now there's a problem that showed up. Hey, if, if we have another pandemic and odds are we're probably going to have something else happen, right? Okay. You know, if we have to go virtual, what happens? And everybody saw that gap. So what's brilliant about this is that when I'm talking to the schools about, you know, opportunities, what's out there, you know, and there's this typical jobs that people go to, but now let me tell you about this, right? And Brian and I talked about internships. Let me just, let me just show you something else, right? Doesn't mean you're going to do it. But now, hey, you remember when you were at, you had your back up against the wall at the Burger King? Yeah, okay. This company fixes that. Really? You know, it's, it's you know, you see the light. Really? Yeah. And they'd like to show you what, it, you know, since you're, and again, it's, it's, it comes down to leadership. The leadership matters. Don't, everybody goes, well, no, leadership matters. It does. It really does. When you go out and you're going to go into an, you're going to talk to, you know, normally you're going to talk to a sovereign nation, you're going to talk to the chief. And a lot of times, even though you're talking to the chief, hey, that person may not be the leader, right? It may not. It's just, it could be a figurehead. It happens. You go into certain neighborhoods and you're talking to the mayor. And, and after you find out, it's, it's Mrs. Johnson who runs a church that's running, you know, she runs the show here, right? You know, so you could, you know, she bakes pie and all that. She's, she's real quiet. But guess what? When she's sitting in church and she goes, no, everybody in the church says, no, no, you know, and you wonder why, okay, I, I convinced the, the pastor, <laughs> I convinced him, and Mrs. Johnson did, did this, and she walked out. It was over. So part of this is that that leadership now, hey, you know what? Here's a company. Here's an industry uh, that you probably don't know about, but this is what they do. Oh, man, you mean my Wi-Fi and my mother's house can work? Yeah. yeah. So now you start to see that where now you start to introduce people to an industry, and when you do that, you're going to see some, you know, everybody that comes to you is not going to be great, but you're going to see some really gifted people that just didn't, the kid was a farmer before, but guess what? He, he's got the knack to do this. Now you start to see this skill set. And now when this happens now, Hey, you know what? We're not going to go into panic mode, you know, through bonfire, we've got the fiber out here that, okay, if we want to go virtual, no big deal. You know, nobody's freaking out anymore, right? No big deal. You've got HBCU campuses. That when I, and I've been on the phone when he said, hey, how's your broadband? It's great. Oh, but, you know, I can't walk from this building. Well, it's not great. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think Brian and I were on a call with a guy, and he's like, man, the broadband kind of stinks. Yeah, because, you know, you, now you see, you know, his, his Zoom was real choppy, right? So now you start to see, okay, what's the opportunity? And now it's that introduction to let people know that you're open to even have this conversation. And that's, that's the... That's the heroic part of it, that you're, you're open to have this conversation, you mean it, and then well, maybe a year or two from now, you've got folks that now start to see this. They're bringing this to the communities that they know. Hey, I know that you're at Akron, but this community over here, and you wouldn't even know, you, you, this community over here really needs it. You know, my cousin's over here. So that's the leadership. That's the part where 
you know, you have to have somebody guiding the ship. And everybody says, well, it's free. No, no, you can say that all you want, you know, let things go bad. Everything's going back to, okay, you know, what, what do we stand for, right? And that's the current. It's interesting. On, I would... on, uh, I'm just curious, Megan, on, on that note, like, I mean, the grants and a lot of the money, I mean, you mentioned earlier about requirements, but I mean, the government is for the people, by the people, right? Like, I mean, it's the purpose is funding and federal, you know, we put taxes there to equally fund all Americans, right? And the diversity is that's there. So it's, I'm wondering, you know, how do we, there's, there's the diversity that's the requirement in the grants, but then there aren't really requirements per se on the kind of all the way downstream within the infrastructure side of it, right? Yeah, so I would, I, I'm absolutely going to answer that. I wanted to real quick say about leaders um, that everyone can be a leader. Like, obviously, Brian, you are a leader and you are doing a great job with this. Um, I'm a leader in my small group, right? And someone out in the field might be a leader amongst their three friends, right? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about leadership making the change, you know, it, it's not just like, oh, I'm going to sit back because I'm not the you know CEO of the company. You can think about what your circle is, what your group is, where you kind of have that position where people listen to you. Um, so it's not just on the Bryans and the fields, like, you know, everyone has a part to play and you might not think you're a leader, you know, in the broad sense, but maybe you are, you know, in a small, even in your family, right? Like these are, you know, discussions for everywhere, but to your right. kind of to that, Nick, when we talk about moving down the line, um, it does require uh, states right now. So when we're thinking of B, right, this is where a lot of this talk of the diversity is and, you know, finding these things. And it says in there that is um, a requirement of grantees and sub grantees, right? So once the states get the money, they're going to open up grant programs. And it is in the statute also a requirement of sub grantees. So yes, the states have to do it, but, you know, the applicants have to do it as well. I think what the challenge is, is that you're going to have people who say, oh, yeah, you know, I'm doing X, Y, Z um, and aren't really right. They want the money to build their network and, you know, they're going to say what they need to on the application to get it, which is, you know, a shame that we have applications like that and people doing that. And so I would just challenge everyone to actually take those questions seriously. I think sometimes there's a tendency to kind of you know, roll your eyes at it, but you know, there are people out there doing the work and it does, it does take work to do that. And I remember talking with um, Brian about a program that uh, goes to community colleges and trains field technicians and Brian was all about it and it was great. And so when you come to that, you can say, yeah, I actually, you know, am doing stuff with this and you need to, you need to actually do it because that's what's going to make the change. Um, so you know, it is a requirement. Are people going to actually follow through? Um, and they are then required to report on that when you're reporting, uh, I think, biannually on the work you're doing. They are asking for a list of your employees. So they're going to check up on it. Are they going to take away your funds if you don't have, you know, a certain number of apprentices or a certain number of formerly incarcerated people? I don't know. But you know, I, I think it is um, now going up to kind of a broader view, a real shift in the industry, right? And I think the conversation needs to be like, let's take this seriously. You know, let's not just see it as a part of the application and come up with a crafty answer. Is there any specificity that they're really trying to push? Because I mean, sometimes that, sometimes that, that becomes a challenge, right? Because, you know, without defined detail, um, obviously it's left to the respondent to craft it as they interpret it, right? And then sometimes yeah. too much specificity also could um, be challenging also in a particular area as well, right? So exactly. it's, you're it's, in, a, it's a balance, right? If you're in, a, you know, a rural Montana and you're applying for this and they want a certain number of you know, a diverse population, you just might not have that around right. you, you know, and are you going to be then disqualified because of this? Right. Um, so I think 
in it, there is there is a degree of specificity when they talk about workforce um, and they give lots of examples, which I think is good. And I think that, you know, it's it, it can be something where you have to be creative, right? And I would bring this back to when we think about diversity and what is it um, and what does it look like? It is many, many things. And they do a great job of, of pointing that out in their digital equity grant, which, you know, translates over where they have that big list of what a diverse and what a underrepresented population is, right? And it's not just women and people of color. Um, and so I think it, 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 they give enough room that you can kind of look around and say, okay, maybe, you know, we don't have any people of color in this community that we can recruit from. Like that is a sad fact in some areas, but do you have veterans? Do you have formerly incarcerated people? You know, what are you doing? And there are organizations out there that those kinds of people, I don't want to say kinds of people, but that those individuals belong to, you know? So are you going to a veterans area and seeing who's available, right? And sometimes it's things as simple as that. If you're saying, you know, we have some of our staff, you know, going to these meetings and talking to people about the work we do, you know? So I think there can be many permutations of it, Hey, Megan. Do that work. And so they leave some, some room for that. Um, but, you know, again, it is, you know, how can you interpret that and how can you think creatively about it, which can then be the difficult for some people, you know, if you're not used to that way of thinking, it can, it can be hard to come up with those ideas. Hey, Megan, I, I think that's where, that's where competition is now. That's what happens. Um, well, so when you start to perform, it's not what the other people are doing. It's now, because uh, a bonfire, and I was at the last meeting, it's a, the, you know, your ratio male-female is, is, is it, it, it was strong. It, you know, you, there was a lot of females in that room uh, relative to the conference I walked through with, with Brian. So again, now- the number, I've been to those ones. <laughs> yeah, but the, the numbers start, so this, <laughs> this is what we're doing. So again, when you go in and you're able to hit some benchmarks, when you're able to score some touchdowns, you're not saying what everybody else is not doing, but if people are not, uh, you know, we're checking the boxes, we're making stuff up. Now you're putting in bids where, you know what, we've got veterans, we've got, you, you start to show, you put to lay down markers, right? That, you know, we take this serious. So now other, uh, you know, the people that are not doing it, it becomes apparent. It, it really becomes, it, it really becomes apparent. Then it, it shifts back to the state agency they go, ah, you know, we really need, no, okay, you really didn't mean it, right? Okay, so next time I go, yeah. vote. so it, there's some accountability. It, 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 does, it does take time. There's some accountability where now, hey, this group, I know what they said, but when, when Bonfire comes to the table, not only do they have diversity, but they're actively going into the, you see what I'm saying? So they're actively yeah. going into the community. Actively and being intentional in it. And right? it's not just right. happenstance so like, oh great, a person of color applied, let's hire right. them, right? That you're intentionally seeking people at HBCU. Correct. Like that is the difference. And when you are Correct. competing and it's at that end and you know someone has an equally great project with equally great budget, but you're doing that step more of, of diversity, you're going through. Yeah, no, I also and, think and, about, you know, we're talking about the funding associated with all of this, which is obviously key with everything that's happening and, and coming. But I think one one interesting bit of data that we've seen recently is with the ACP program, you know, that's obviously subsidizing broadband. What they, there's some really interesting data finally really coming out on that. And, and what they what what it's showing is the folks that are taking ACP right, and getting their broadband subsidized, uh, obviously are economically just, you know, um, challenged, right? They're in that poverty level as it's defined. And so that typically represents, right, minorities in, in a lot of cases. And um, so what's really interesting, though, is that those folks are using up to 40% more data than non-ACP users, right? Mm -hmm. And so huge, right? So so there's tons of pent up demand for usage. Um, so that's that's one interesting thing we've seen. And and secondly, when when they're signing up for the plans, they're not signing up and trying to get the cheapest or even free plan. They're using it to buy the higher speed tiered plans and get more gigabit services because there is that need 
right? And sometimes, and it's not obviously just minorities, it's happening all, all, all over the place where you're starting to have multi-generational mm -hmm. families within, you know, one particular residence, right? Um, the college kids, they all come back, right, for a while, um, you know, um, it, you know, people that are starting to age in place start to come back, right? Um, and, and are under one household. And so the, 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 the need is real. And I think that's really an interesting um, data point because if we can figure out affordability in those areas, the, 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 the need is pent up. It's pent up, right? So I'm, I'm pretty thrilled actually to see that data and I, I hope our administration of current and future will continue that program because that's probably the biggest thing that the government really can aid in. We obviously need to lay infrastructure and a lot of that's happening and, and that's going to be a challenge. But what, what to Field's point, the pandemic showed that we have broadband problems right in the major metro too, yeah. right? Right here in Denver, thousands of kids got disconnected for almost 18 months. Their only connection was at, at school, mom and dad don't have a, a broadband connection, right? So they, right. they literally like lost their connection to society, if you will, organized society. And, and so, it, so we have a big problem here. And, and so, but I find that as really interesting data because typically the big problem with ISPs is redlining out those areas, mm -hmm. right? And, and going after the more affluent and, and also the most affordable to build too. Um, so I think there's some, some positive data coming from that that we all need to keep an eye out on um, because we need to focus on getting all Americans connected affordably. Yeah. And I would say, I think, uh, I'm sorry. So good. No good. Oh, my last point is, you know, I, I am as hopeful as Brian that funds for ACP will continue. Um, the pessimistic and skeptical part of me says it might run out and maybe we have a gap and Hopefully it comes back, but you know, who knows what's on, who knows? But um, I think then the challenge is, you know, our, our ISPs, you know, especially the bigger ones, open to keeping a lower rate. You know, if that subsidy is gone, are you willing to continue? Like, you know, is that, even, even if that might take a cut in your budget, right? If you're at one, if you're Comcast, that doesn't matter, that's, you know, you know, small, small bottom line for you. Right. Um, and I think it can be more difficult for smaller ISPs, but in my experience, our clients who are small ISPs are more in touch with their community and did more during COVID when there was no subsidy for them to continue that. And I think there can be a sustainability to it. You might be have to get creative about it, but I would just encourage everyone that if there is a gap period continue that because, you know, as Fields has said, as Brian has said, it is so important for communities to have broadband. Um, and, you know, we're doing great work and I would encourage everyone to not stop that just if there's a hiccup or an interruption, you know, and it's, it's a continuous thing. This isn't just, we build it and it's done and great, good, you know, for everyone. It's not, you know, there's a lot of factors to it and, you know, everyone needs to kind of have their part in, in making sure things don't end when the funding ends or when it's built. That's a great right? point. Huge. Guys, we've, we've been, it's almost an hour. Um, I feel like we God, should clearly have a series, a series on <laughs> diversity and inclusion. Um, so I think, but, uh, so I think we actually will we'll definitely have another one of these, but before we end, I think maybe each of you, you know, what's the one thing personally that you think we can do to help move diversity and inclusion forward within the space, this technology, the broadband space we work in, just at an individual level, what do you, what's, what would your advice be? Fields? I would, oh, sorry. Or Megan, wait, 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 wait. I, like I keep interrupting everyone and I know it's like, That's you okay. and are interrupted and now we're changing up. the roles here. How many of the conversation? <laughs> feels great. I know what you guys feel like, but sorry. <laughs> that was maybe out of line. Shit, Nick, can we take that part out? That is not. Yeah. <laughs> um, but to, to, to that, my thing would be to challenge yourself. Everyone needs to challenge yourself. And we might need to make people aware that they need to challenge themselves, but that's the only way we're going to get the change. I think we need to see in the industry. If everyone takes accountability for 
their actions, for, you know, their preconceived notions for what, what they might say or do or not say or not do. And so I think it is on all of us. I don't think, you know, I think that's where the change is going to be is everyone, you know, everyone on this call, all of us challenging our notions and, and how we act and what we believe. Great advice. Fields, Brian. Go. Yeah. go ahead, Fields. Um, just uh, somebody said 80% of it's just, just showing up, show up. This, these are, it's showing up like these, letting people know what you, where you stand, what you're doing. Um, uh, when you got a job, let's, let's get it into those communities where, you know, people, uh, now know there's an opportunity. Um, and again, it just, just showing up intentionally and you have to be intentional and then, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, being consistent. Uh, so, uh, you got to start someplace. Uh, so Nick, uh, you know, I'd be glad to jump on another one of these. Um, I'd love to take these and, uh, and chop them up and send them to some schools and just, you know, just let people know that there's, there's an industry out here that is, uh, you know, just, I will not say wide open, but there's an industry that is growing. Uh, there's some needs that are in your community. And here's a company that, you know, would like to, to sort of fix those going forward. And so not only just saying about it, throwing banners up and in, in, in posters, but actually showing up at your community, showing up at your meetings, talking about what you've not only done, but what you were doing with like communities, you know, when you've got sovereign nations, it's great to talk to another sovereign nation about what you're doing. So again, just that intentionality, it, it just, it becomes contagious. So that's what I would say. Awesome. Yeah, I think Fields, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, we've made some good headway, obviously, with with you being on board. And, but what it, what I think we always talk about is we can always do better. You know, I look at us like a high, you know, high performance sports team, and no matter what, you can you can always do better. And I think it really starts with just trying to hold yourself more accountable. Um, you know, the work that we've been fortunate um, to be able to do in working with some sovereign nations is being able to listen and learn. And, and what we've learned is there's a big need. Um, we, we provide a value that, you know, they can utilize, but it's really, you know, sitting down and, and understanding their needs. I always talk about these, every single community is like a, a snowflake, right? They're mm -hmm. all absolutely unique. Absolutely. And you gotta sit down and listen and understand what their needs are and get to know them. Uh, these projects, they just don't get built overnight. Uh, it takes a village um, to get it done and um, a lot of work. And when you find yourself aligning appropriately with the folks on the other side of the table, as the challenges come up and they always come up in building these networks, then you just knock them down together because right. you're, you're, you're finding what we like to look for is looking for folks that are really trying to solve the problem. Right. And if really align that way, then we just constantly, you know, it's like a puzzle and we're just constantly, you know, solving the issues and moving forward and working really well together. So when you find that, you know, um, it's a wonderful thing, but you have to be willing to listen and sit down and understand what the real issues are and then and then decide how, how do you what what's the approach what what is possible you know work with great organizations like learn design apply um, because a lot of the areas that have the need also have the need for additional funding because it's not economically viable today on its own um, so a little shout out to megan and her team but they do great work and we love working with them and and quite frankly, they do a great job earning that trust as well and understanding the needs of the you know people that they work with. So, um, but, but, but I guess one thing I wanted to share is part of what we're trying to do is inspire, you know, other and sovereign nations to, to take the leap to, mm -hmm. to try to figure out this problem and, and, and municipalities, a, a, any folks that feel like they're left behind, you, you've got to put work into this too. And I, I encourage you to take the leap and I encourage, you know, our whole ecosystem of, of broadband solutions and partners to, to, to work outside of their normal bubble, right? Go, mm. go work directly with the municipality, work with the tribal nation. Um, they're all Americans, they need help. And when you can create that bond, it's a, it's a bond that may be likely there for a lifetime. And it's great work. We're so fortunate to do the work that we get to do. Well, we'll add in the clapping as we, you know, <laughs> the visual effects afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even do the sound effect for, for all of the <laughs> Well, guys, thanks so much, uh, Fields, Megan, Brian, uh, for joining today. Obviously, 
great conversation that I, I, I we definitely will schedule another one on this topic. Uh, for those of you who want to listen, we are on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and uh, feel free to listen and share. So thank you again for everybody's time. And we will. There's, there's yep. great jobs. We go to the go to the website. Uh, there's great jobs. Take a look. Uh, some of them are virtual, so take a look. And again, uh, there's some great opportunities. So um, make sure you check out that website. Nick, can you awesome. post um, Fields Diversity Magazine website when you put this up? Yeah, great. we can tag it for sure. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Awesome. Um, well, well, guys, thanks, yeah. Guys. Thanks.